Hey guys, today in this video we're going to be talking about how we solve an absolute value equation. So here, make sure you get the uh, steps copied down, particularly, uh, well, really just get them all down. Uh, we have to isolate the absolute value. When we're working an absolute value equation, we treat the absolute value up to a point like we would a normal variable. We're trying to isolate it so that way we can do the following things. First, we want to look to see does the absolute value equal a negative number? If it does, we can just stop because it's impossible for an absolute value to produce a negative number. Absolute value, remember, is a distance on a number line. Distances can never be represented as a negative number. So if we have an absolute value producing a negative value, a negative number, we know there's something wrong. Uh, otherwise, what we'll do, this is the most, uh, what we'll do, uh, separate the equation into two separate parts, and we'll take the value uh, that we were given originally, the positive value, and then we'll change another one to a negative value. Uh, and the whole reason that we do that, because keep in mind, the absolute value of any number is always a positive number, but I could also have the negative absolute value of something still produce the same thing. So with an absolute value, we could have two possible answers uh, that produce the same uh, solution to the equation. So that's why we do what we do in step number three. Uh, last, we're going to solve each equation and finally write uh, our answer in uh, set notation. And remember, set notation is the one that's going to use the curly brackets. So let's take a look at this particular equation. Now keep in mind the absolute value itself, the stuff n minus 5 inside of those two vertical bars, we're going to treat that just like a normal variable, like x. So we're going to solve it pretty much like normal. I'm going to uh, get rid of the constant term by adding 14 to both sides. Here they cancel. Here I'm going to get a positive 12. So now I'm going to have uh, 3 multiplied by the absolute value of n minus 5 to be equal to 12. Since the 3 is multiplied to the absolute value, we'll divide both sides by 3. And the 3 is on the left side, simplify, which will leave me with the absolute value of n minus 5 to be equal to 4. And at this point, we've isolated the absolute value. So the first step is done. We've isolated the absolute value. The second step said, does the absolute value produce a negative number? In this case, it does not. So let's move on to step three. Step three says to rewrite the problem without the absolute value brackets normally and where I take what was inside of the absolute value brackets and set it equal to the same value, but the opposite, uh, the opposite of the original value, and solve each equation like normal. So add 5 here. These cancel, and I get a 9. So n is equal to 9 in one case. And here, again, on the right side, solve for n. Here they cancel. Here I'm going to get a positive 1. So in this case, n is equal to 1. So the solution set, the way that we would write it, there's nothing saying that I have to write the smaller number first, but that's how I'm going to write it, is I'm going to write the smaller number first. And since those are the two solutions to the equation, we just have those two numbers in the solution set. Now this is the one example that I want to kind of prove it with, why both of those work. I'm not going to ask you to do this, but I want to demonstrate it for you. Why do we have two solutions for an absolute value problem? So let's substitute those numbers. Let's start with the 1. If I take the original equation and I substitute a 1 into it and evaluate it, will it give me a negative 2? So inside the absolute value uh, symbol, we have 1 minus 5, which is a negative 4. Now, the absolute value of a negative 4 is simply a 4. So here, 12 minus 14 
to be negative 2, and we do see negative 2 equals negative 2. That is a true statement, so that one worked. Okay, and let's check the other answer. Let's check the 9 and see how that works. So 3, absolute value, 9 minus 5 minus 14 equals negative 2. So inside the absolute value brackets, we get 3 with the absolute value of 4, and you can kind of see here where I had a negative 4 in the first one and a positive 4 here. The absolute value of 4 or negative 4 is still just 4. So we should wind up with the same results. So the absolute value of 4 is just 4. And again, 3 times 4 is 12. So that will give me negative 2 to be equal to negative 2. So that one worked as well. So I, I'm just doing this as, an, as a demonstration for why, when we're working with absolute values, we can uh, have two answers that uh, produce the same thing. Uh, again, because the absolute value of a positive number or a negative number is still the same thing. So let's check out this uh, second example here. Uh, nothing real crazy about it other than the fact that now we have some uh, decimal numbers to work with. And you know, we'll start this guy off the exact same way as the first problem. Move the constant term over. And here they cancel out. 11.2 minus the 6.3 will be 4.9. Rewrite the problem. 7 times the absolute value of 2w plus 5 will be equal to 4.9. And uh, again, get rid of the coefficient here of the 7 by dividing both sides by 7. On the left side, 7 divided by 7 simplifies to be 1. So now we've isolated the absolute value of 2w plus 5. And 4.9 divided by 7 is simply 0.7. So once the absolute value has been, uh, has been isolated, this is where we check to see does it equal a positive value, and it does. So we continue on. Because it equals a positive value, we're going to drop the absolute value symbol. So I'm going to just have 2w plus 5 to be equal to uh, positive 0.7. And here on the right, we'll have 2w plus 5 to be equal to a negative 0.7. Where the only difference is uh, where we started with a positive 7 originally, after we isolated the absolute value, we write it one time here and change the sign one time here. Because again, we can have two answers uh, when we're working with absolute values. So solve like normal. So here, uh, I'm going to get 2w will be equal to uh, negative 4.3 when I move the 5 over, divide by 2. And here, I'm going to get w to be equal to a negative 2.15. Uh, same thing here, move the 5 over, and I'm going to get uh, negative 5.7. Divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to get negative 2.85. So the uh, smaller number is the negative 2.85. So I'm going to write that first. So negative 2.85 in my curly brackets. Don't forget the 5. And the negative 2.15. And that is the solution to this linear uh, absolute value problem. Third example, uh, real quick, let's the much smaller numbers to work with, nice whole numbers. So move the 14 over. And these cancel, and that's going to give me a 20. So now I have negative 5 multiplied by the absolute value of 2y to be equal to 20. Divide both sides with a coefficient of negative 5. Here, negative 5 and negative 5 simplify to be 1. So now I have the absolute value of 2y to be equal to negative 4. And at this point, we really need to pay attention. An absolute value number can be negative inside, but because it produces a distance, the number it produces represents a distance, it can never be negative. Okay, so because this produces a negative answer, there is no solution. This is not going to work out as an absolute value equation. And so the 
set notation for no solution is just an empty set of brackets. Uh, next uh, example here, uh, let's don't forget, or I'm sorry, don't freak out that there's a fraction here. Uh, it's, it's no big deal. Start working out just like normal. Get rid of the constant term. Here they cancel. Here I'm going to get negative 6. So this is going to change to be negative 2 multiplied to the absolute value of 3 minus v over 3 to be equal to negative 6. Divide by the coefficient negative 2. And the 2's on the left simplify to be 1, which will leave me the absolute value of 3 minus v over 3 to be equal to a positive 3. So by dividing both sides with the negative, in this case, we wound up with a positive uh, whole number on the right side. So we can continue working this one. So we're going to drop the absolute value symbols now, and that'll give me 3 minus v over 3 to be equal to the positive 3, and we'll have 3 minus v over 3 to be equal to a negative 3. So I'm going to work the one on the left out first. Uh, here I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, which will give me a 0 on both sides, which is okay. Uh, it'll give me negative v over 3 to be equal to 0. So I want to get rid of the 3 out of the denominator, so I do that by multiplying both sides by 3. So 3 over 3 simplifies to be 1. Actually, we'll do it with a negative to get rid of the negative completely. And uh, that'll give me v to be equal to 0. And same thing here. Get rid of the 3 by subtracting it on both sides. Here they cancel, but here I'm going to get a negative 6. So I have negative v over 3 to be equal to negative 6. Multiply both sides by the negative 3. And I'm going to get here the 3's simplify to be 1. And because we're doing a negative here, negative and negative will simplify to be a positive 1b. And negative times negative will give me a positive 18. So the solution set for this example will be 0 and 18. And they pretty much just kind of follow the same thing over and over again. Nothing real crazy. Uh, it's, it's just we have to keep in mind what our order of operations are when we're working backwards solving uh, an equation. Here they're trying to trip us up a little bit by making everything uh, a decimal in some way. But again, no big deal. Use a calculator to uh, help you with your arithmetic. So the 43.8 minus the 6.7 is going to be... 37.1. So when I rewrite the problem, I have 5.3 multiplied to the absolute value of Q plus 9.2 to be equal to 37.1. Divide by the coefficient, 5.3. Here they simplify to be 1, and I'm left with the absolute value of Q plus 9.2 to be equal to, and again, just use your calculator, 37.1 divided by uh, 5.3 is 7. So we've isolated the absolute value. It equals a positive number. So at this point, break it up into two separate equations. Q plus 9.2 equals 7, and Q plus 9.2 equals negative 7. Move the 9.2 over through subtraction. And here, on the left side, I'm going to get Q to be equal to negative 2.2. And on the right side, I'm going to get Q to be equal to negative 16.2. So the solution set here, again, I'm going to write the smallest number first. And in this case, negative 16.2 is smaller than negative 2.2. So there is the solution set for our final example. So again, keep in mind when you're working an absolute value equation, uh, treat the absolute value like a variable. Try to isolate it. Once we've isolated it, make sure it is not equal to a negative number. And uh, if, it's, if it's not equal to a negative number, break it up into two separate equations where I change the sign of the value on the right side of the equal sign or the left side, depending on how it works out, and uh, see what we wind up getting. 
So thanks for watching. Uh, see you in class soon. I hope everybody's doing well.